Hello and welcome. The topic of today's video is the 545 by 39 mm rifle cartridge. We will go through the design, the characteristics of the cartridge, its use, and the various improvements over the decades, plus a test on some captured Russian body armor. So stick around to learn why this cartridge was given the nickname of the Poison Bullet. In the early 1970s, the Soviet military was looking for a new cartridge and accompanying rifle to replace the aging AKM design in the 762 by 39 mm cartridge. They would go down the path of the smaller diameter projectile with a higher velocity, a very common decision at the time among other global superpowers. Eventually, M. Sabolnikov and his team would create the 545 by 39 mm cartridge and it would be accepted into service with the new AK-74 series rifles. This new cartridge was lighter and smaller than the older 7.62x39, which meant that soldiers could carry more cartridges for the same weight and space. It also meant a smaller free recoil impulse, which in turn made follow-up shots easier for the shooter. And these types of cartridges generally have better ballistic performance compared to the older generations of intermediate cartridges, like 7.62x39, or 762 by 51 NATO. Many other countries would also adopt similar cartridges for their armed forces either before or after the Soviets did. For example, the SS 109 M855 5.56 by 45 mm cartridge, which was adopted by NATO in 1970. Or the DPB 87 5.8 by 42 mm cartridge adopted by the Chinese in 1987. The first production cartridge of 545 by 39 was designated 7N6. The Soviet Union and select Warsaw Pact countries made so much of it that it is still one of the most common types of production 545 by 39 ammunition. So why was it named the Poison Bullet? Well, it's not actually poison, but something probably worse. It got its nickname due to the tendency it had to yaw and tumble once it had entered its target usually causing massive amounts of trauma. And how did it do this so consistently? Let's take a look at this projectile here. It appears to be a normal spitzer or pointed type bullet with a full metal jacket made out of a copper zinc alloy and a boat tail rear to reduce drag on the projectile during travel. This is a pretty typical design of projectile and it was embedded in a lacquer coated steel case, also very typical of the Soviet Union. The steel case is cheaper than brass case. But once we look inside of the projectile, we can see why it behaves the way it does. Let's start from the tip. Just beneath the tip is a hollow section. This hollow section usually deforms when it hits its target. This deformation will usually cause some yaw or tumbling. Just below this hollow space is a lead plug. And below that, an unhardened steel core. Although it has a steel core, it's not really capable of penetrating most armor of level 3 and up by the NIJ standards. And right after the steel core, there's nothing. It's again hollow and also open, like you can see here. When the bullet hits its target, the steel core will tend to move back into this space causing a shift in the bullet's center of gravity, which also affects its direction of travel. With these effects combined, we see how the 7N6 cartridge became known as the poison bullet. Its consistent tendency, although not 100% of the time, to tumble and change direction inside the target causing temporary and permanent cavities, often devastating to its target. The performance of 7N6 when paired with a standard AK-74 is formidable. The average velocity is between 880 and 900 meters per second, and it has an effective firing range of 500 meters for point targets, 800 meters for area targets, and a maximum firing range of about 3,150 meters. Over its many decades of service, this cartridge has seen modernizations and updates. In 1987, they released 7N6M, M meaning modernized. Almost the same as 7N6, but with a hardened steel core instead of the previous unhardened core. The goal was to increase potential armor penetration. 
These can be identified by a red ring around the neck. In 1992 came the 7N10 improved penetrator. This round discarded the lead plug above the steel core, and in 1994 they filled the rest of the hollow cavity with more steel core. These have a purple ring around the neck for identification. In 1998, the 7N22 armor-piercing cartridge came out. This bullet has a sharp pointed steel penetrating tip and can be identified by a red ring around the neck and a black tip. In 1999 came the 7N24 Super Armor Penetrator. This cartridge has a tungsten carbide cone nose penetrator. These have a black ring around the neck. In 2013, the 7N39 was released. These have a tungsten carbide and cobalt penetrator, similar to the 7N24. These also have a black ring around the neck. There are also a few specialty cartridges as well. The 7T3 and 7T3M tracer cartridges, like this one here. These ignite at about 50 meters and burn out by 850 meters, allowing you to see the path of travel. These are marked with green tips, like this one. The 7H3 7H3M and 7KH3 training blanks. These cartridges are either a crimped cartridge with no projectile, or have a white plastic imitation bullet that is designed to shatter when used with a BFA. The 7H4 dummy cartridge. This is a non-firing training tool identified by its longitudinal crimps. And lastly, the 7U1 subsonic cartridge. This was designed to be used in conjunction with a suppressor. This cartridge has a velocity of 303 meters per second, significantly lower than all of the others. These have a green and black painted tip. So now the test. A little bit of background first. This video was recorded many months ago, and it was sort of an impromptu test. Me and my group just happened to require a Russian 6B45 ceramic strike plague from a demilitarized soldier. Without going into any more detail of the acquisition, we decided that since we had a few spare minutes before we had to get back to work, we wanted to see if this armor is as bad as we had heard. So we quickly leaned it against a tree about 50-ish yards away and took a few shots. I want to note that before we shot this, there were no damages prior to the plate that we could observe, and it looked like it was in pretty good condition. The first shot landed in the upper center and appears to have shattered as there is no further penetration or bulging behind that area. The second round struck in the mid-right area and penetrated through with some bulging around. This particular plate, as far as we can tell, was made in 2017 at the St. Petersburg factory. The 6B45 has a GOST rating of 5A. GOST, or maybe GOST system, I'm not sure quite how it's supposed to be said, is on a scale of 1 to 6, with some numbers having an A variant, which denotes a higher protection level, unlike the NIJ system in the US, where the A denotes a lower protection level. The level of 5A should protect against three hits of 762 by 39 armor-piercing incendiary fired from 5.1 meters away, and everything else below that to include three hits of 545 by 39 7N10 hardened steel penetrators fired from 5.1 meters, three hits of 762 by 54 rimmed 57-N-323S steel core fired from 5.1 meters, or three hits of 762 by 39 57-N-231 hardened steel core penetrators fired from 5.1 meters. So that's what it's supposed to protect against and stop. So what did we shoot it with? Well, we used regular 7N6 non-hardened steel core arguably the weakest of the 545 by 39 cartridges when paired against armor. This plate only stopped one round. The result of our test shows two things in my opinion. One, that modern Russian body armor is seriously overestimated and not a good choice for personal protection. And two, 
that the regular 7 and 6 cartridge is still a viable option despite its age. Well, that's it. The history and a test of the 7N6 poison bullet. I hope you liked the video and found it interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe for future videos. Thank you.